Welcome back, I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we're talking about the Heimdallr Sharky Ocean Monster. If you're not familiar with Heimdallr, they're a Chinese brand that can be found on AliExpress as well as their own website, and they mostly focus on homage watches, with this one right here obviously being a monster homage. I've been hearing about Heimdallr for years, but every time I went and looked at their site, nothing really captured my interest. At least until I ran across these new monster homages, as they seem to be an homage of the older second gen monsters, which you'd have a hard time finding new these days. So during a recent AliExpress sale, I finally decided to check them out, and I placed an order for one of these, as well as a titanium sea ghost model which I'll review later. Now when it comes to the Sharky Ocean Monster, you are looking at a 42mm wide case without, and 45.4 with the crown, as well as a lug to lug of 47.6, and a total thickness of 13.3. That total thickness goes from the case back to the outer ridge of the bezel, as that outer ridge is slightly higher than the flat sapphire crystal. Other than that, it's all fairly standard for a 42mm 200m diver and I especially appreciate the lug-to-lug -lug here. With my 7-inch wrist, I find that a 48mm lug-to-lug -lug is just about perfect, as it wraps around without much overhang. So overall, the Sharky is fairly comfortable on the wrist, and I'd say it wears true to its size. It's a little heavy at 200 grams, and it definitely has a very robust and pronounced presence. Yet it feels nicely balanced, and the shorter lengths of the bracelet easily help it wrap around and conform to your wrist. The case design is a little different from traditional divers, as there's a sort of partial shroud on the top and bottom of the case, and that wraps around a section of the bezel. There are also cutouts on either side of the case, which correspond to cutouts on the bezel, all of which makes that bezel seem more integrated into the case design, and I think this is much more apparent on the other versions that have a stainless steel bezel. One interesting thing with this case design is that I think it is deceptively thin looking, from this angle, all you see is the bezel and the top edge of the case where it has those cutouts, which seems to form a rather thin wedge, as well as obscure the smaller case back that protrudes out a bit. Now, that case back has some particulars, as well as a Sharky logo in the dead center, which seems rather fitting for the dial design here. The overall fit and finish is pretty good for the price. It has a nice substantial build quality, one that doesn't feel cheap in any way. And one thing I really like is that practically every millimeter of this case has a nice smooth to the touch feel. The only exception to that is over at the right, with these pseudo crown guards, which is really just the edge of the bottom shroud and a thin bar sticking straight up on the other side. Now these are definitely sharp, and you feel them every time you unscrew the crown and use it, which is rather annoying, but it is livable. The bezel here is 120 click, unidirectional, and no real backplay. The action itself is great, and it has a nice crisp and tactile audible click as you rotate it. And it's actually much easier to get a grip and use than the video suggests. It's just kind of hard to do it without blocking the camera. So overall, this is how a bezel should be. Yet the bezel is also one of my biggest disappointments with this specific watch. From the pictures online, I was expecting more of a rich deep blue color on the bezel and the crown. Yet what showed up looks black in most lighting conditions. Every once in a while, I'll catch a little bit of that blue hue, but most of the time it's black. Now, it is still a cool look, but just not the look I was expecting. So just be aware of that if you are looking at these PVD coated versions. Otherwise, all the other ones have a stainless bezel, so you don't need to worry about it. The overall dial design is more of a Gen 2 monster, where all the indices seem to resemble sharp, jagged teeth. And that, I think, works perfectly with their Sharky logo. Not only does it give it a very aggressive look, but it's also a really effective design, as every index points inward and just draws your eyes right to the center. Currently, there are five different colorways, and I think the red one is the most popular choice. And Heimdallr's also working on another version that's going to be more similar to the toned-down Gen 3 monsters, where only the 12 index looks like a jagged tooth, and the rest are sort of oblong, squarish shapes. They're planning some rather cool colorways with that one, but personally, I like the more aggressive design of the Gen 2s. Now on this one, we have a deep, glossy navy blue dial, and it has a fume gradient where it turns to black right as you get to the edge of those aggressive teeth. The indices here look to be applied with a very thin metallic frame, and then they're filled to the brim with C3 Swiss Superluminova. 
so much so that even before you turn the lights out, they have a nice green hue to them. Now, beyond the indices, you have a raised chapter ring that seems to almost be molded around those indices, as it seems to wrap around the edge of each and then stretch back and upwards towards the flat crystal, which I think adds even more to that aggressive look, like it really is some sort of nautical predator just about to latch on. The chapter ring has more of a charcoal-like appearance, with white indicators painted on, and compared to a lot of the other elements on the dial, it does look a little bit more plasticky. But just due to the design, you'll be too busy looking at every other aspect of the dial to notice. Although one thing you may have noticed here is that that chapter ring isn't quite lined up. When I first saw that in these macro shots, I almost had to double check that this really was an homage. Now the alignment isn't bad, but it is definitely noticeable, which I think is rather strange because I thought the whole point of these molded chapter rings was to kind of avoid issues like that but I guess there's just enough wiggle room here to screw it up. Hopefully most of the other sharkies won't have this issue, but here is proof that it does happen. Now, going back to the center, we have the sharky logo at the top, as well as some text at the bottom, which does include a diver's 200 meter marking. Now, I don't know this for certain, but I'm betting that that's not accurate, that it's more likely a regular 200 meter and not an ISO rated 200 meter. You know, I've talked about this in a few other videos, but it's always really disappointing to see. And especially here. I mean, Heimdaller has been around for a while now, and they really should know better than to put a false rating on the dial. Plus, honestly, it would just look better if they left it off, as the dial's already pretty crowded as it is. Now, over at the right, we have a day date, which is framed in white paint. And I think that is keeping with the source inspiration. Now, it would be nicer if it had a color match date wheel, but at this price, you can't really blame them for not having that. Then, sitting on top of everything, we have the handset, which is a traditional very wide broad arrow for the hour and a thin lance for the minute, along with a loom tip arrow for the second hand. Overall, very fitting, and I personally love this handset with this dial design, as it just keeps everything looking very on point and pronounced. Also keeping with the style is that the hands have a brushed metal finish, and it does look rather rough and macro. But if you pull back and look at them with the naked eye, they look fine. Although since Heimdaller decided to use a glossy dial rather than a flat, I have noticed that the handset does seem to clash a little bit with the polished indices. So I've been wondering if maybe a polished handset would have been a better choice. Generally, monsters have a reputation of having a rather polarizing design, as some love it, and some just can't stand it. If you prefer more clean and classic designs, then the overcrowded dial here is probably going to set your eyes on fire. But if you're like me, you're going to fall in love with the design language at first sight. The modern aggressive styling stands out boldly, while the overly complex layout brings a lot of visual interest as the multitude of angular points draw your eyes in, and you can't help but stare at it, just taking in the various angles, colors, and shapes as they all intersect with each other. And I especially love on this one the deep blue fume gradient, as it just seems to integrate everything together. While the design isn't clean in any way, it is amazingly intuitive, as all the hands and indices stand out boldly, yet independently of each other, making them all easy to make out. Anyway, let's go on to the loom, which initially looks fantastic. In fact, the only thing that I think would improve this is if they had loomed up the bezel. But what I think most people are going to be interested in is the longevity. Now, compared to a Seiko turtle, the ocean monster fades out just a little bit beforehand. So overall, I'd say it's good loom, and especially so compared to a lot of other Chinese brands. But it's not quite Seiko good, and if you're comparing it to some of the better Chinese brands like San Martin or what I've seen from Kronos, I think those are going to be just a little bit better. So moving on to the movement, and here we have a Seiko NH36A, which is the day-date version of the NH35A. Pretty much the standard workhorse of the affordable automatic watch, and hard to go wrong with at this price. On to the bracelet, and I think this is one of the watch's strong points. It's a single link design with a brushed finish, except for the sides and the top point that joins it to the next link, which is polished. The bracelet has solid links with a mostly milled push button clasp. The links are also rather short, which I think helps it conform more easily to your wrist. While there isn't a traditional fitted end link, I think the case design compensates for that a little bit, just by bringing the flat end link into a little nook and then extending the link outside the case. 
which winds up eliminating a lot of the gap you would normally see with a flat end link, as well as it just integrates it better into the design. Although one thing I noticed is that this is a rather tight fit between the spring bar and the case. So some thicker straps will not work with this watch, but overall it's a very solid and comfortable bracelet and no reason to really swap it out unless you want a different look. Now, in terms of value, these are regularly priced at 179 bucks, but I have seen them frequently on sale for 150. And with that, I think there is a lot of value here, and especially compared to brand name watches. But these days, it is good to be a bargain watch hunter, as there are a lot of options out there that are just as good as this. If you're talking Chinese brands, I've personally seen some great watches from Kronos and Mercur. And even outside of that, you have the Aragon Dive Master, and sometimes you can find an Orient Kamasu for just under 200 bucks. So there are a lot of great options out there for a budget diver, and I think it's really going to come down to what you really like the best, all of which have a good build quality, so kind of hard to go wrong with any of them. But overall, I think Heimdaller did a great job here. It's a solid, well-made watch, and I think it's a great representation of why some people love budget Chinese brands. They may not be that original, but you are getting a heck of a lot for your money. The only other potential issue I see is the H or homage factor here, which a lot of you probably already know where you stand on that. And if not, well, that's a much longer conversation for another day. Well, that's the Heimdaller Sharky Ocean Monster in a nutshell. Let me know what you think about it down below, as well as what do you think about the Titanium Sea Ghost version I also picked up. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.